That allows Campbell, the Lions, and Detroit to exhale and celebrate this hard fought playoff drought. Stafford played valiantly, brilliantly, battered, bruised, bloodied the whole bit. But in the end, the Lions are able to snap this nine game losing streak in the playoffs, which was one longer than the Bengals and the Chiefs. The longest log, uh, the last time I should say they won a playoff game before Sunday. Barry Sanders was in his third season in the National Football League. Lindsay Theory with Sam Laporta after the Lions escape by one. Sam, your first home playoff game here in Detroit in 30 years. How would you describe this entire scene right now? It's really unbelievable. I just. It's hard to put into words. There's a lot of people that put in so much work this year and the city needed this and they deserve this after 30 years. We all know the history of Jared Goff and the Rams. What did this mean to get this win for Jared? If there was any extra incentive to play hard today, it was definitely for 1-6. I mean, Jared's our fearless leader. He's our captain. He leads us into battle every week. So it's great to see him go up against his former team, have a lot of success and just lead us to victory today. Officially questionable coming into this. Was there any doubt in your mind that you'd be a part of this game? Yeah, I mean, the human body only <laughs> recovers so fast, but uh, I was doing everything in my power with a lot of help from the trainers to get back out here tonight and got it done. And I think I, you know, I added a lot of value tonight, or at least I hope I did. So, you know, I credit the training staff. They put in a lot of hard work and a lot of hours, so I, I appreciate them a lot. Another home playoff game for you guys. What does that mean to this team and how much does it help to be here at Ford Field? Yeah, Ford Field was unbelievable tonight. I mean, you guys were loud as heck. I mean, yeah, I, it's an indescribable feeling. You can hear it right now. It's crazy, man. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Sam. I yeah, appreciate you. Thank you. You can feel the joy coming out of that young man right there. And you definitely added value. Uh, yeah, clearly, you add so. value. Tim Hasselbeck is with us as he has been all season long on Sundays to talk about what we saw. And in this game, if I tell you at halftime, you know, it's going to come down to the defense. It yeah. wouldn't have seemed likely. But ultimately, it was the Rams bogging down in a place where they've thrived against a defense that, frankly, hadn't been very good at all in those situations. Yeah. Red zone. What happened? And I, and I think that's the difference. I think and it was kind of a different thing each trip down. You know, you look at the first trip to the red zone. The Rams are trying to get a pick play, a rub play. It's one of the reasons they're so good in the red zone, but they do such a good job of passing it off. And so, like, when you look at each kind of trip down there, how they attacked it was different. And I think that really ends up being the difference of the game. And I think you've got to look at kind of really Dan Campbell and his staff, what they've done in terms of kind of getting that defense to rally after where they were a year ago. I mean, they were almost like epically bad a year ago, mm -hmm. but instead they've kind of turned it around, find big stops. Those three red zone trips ultimately end up being the difference in the football game. And the Lions, as Lindsay was asking, they don't know who it'll be, but they know they're home next week, a win away from a potential NFC championship game, and they'll have it in that field where the crowd clearly makes a difference. Uh, Stafford, I, I mean, look, I, I've watched him play for a long time. I've known him a long time, and I've always respected what that guy's willing to endure to be available and on the field. He, I mean, he's, I, how would you frame sort of what he gave the Rams in a game where they come up a point short? I mean, he was incredible tonight. And, look, I, you and I have watched him for a long time, and we seemingly always talk about his toughness. That was clearly on display tonight hand, shots that he took, ribs, who knows what he was dealing with. And then the talent level, too, still at this age, to make some of the throws that he makes. I hope people really do appreciate I don't think they the do. type of competitor, how tough he is, because, it, that I mean, look, they, they don't win the football game. Nope. But, like, sometimes I, when you leave the field and you feel like, hey, you left it all out there. He there's he should feel that way. It was a third and nine, and they were going to be stopped just short. But it was it was fringe field goal range. The the uh, Lions took a penalty, which back them up. It's third and fourteen. We showed on the highlight. Nakua a little bit of a tug of the jersey. Yep. You certainly could have called it. They didn't. It hits his hands, but he's getting hit by Anzalone, and he drops it. They elect to punt with only one timeout. Right. It's real easy for you and I to sit here and talk about it now, but that's kind of what we do. McVay and the Rams are a pretty aggressive team. Mm -hmm. You surprised they punted in that situation given the circumstances. 
probably not because of the distance. I agree uh, with I that. And I think that that's probably the differentiator. The other side of it is this, and it played out this way. Dan Campbell isn't one of these guys that gets the football back in a four-minute situation and is, we won't throw the football. There maybe is a part of Sean McVay saying they've been aggressive trying to seal games in the past and they throw the football. We, if we get them to do that, that'll work in our favor. Now, they, they did, it, did it, they just happened to complete it. So I think McVay is making the right decision in that moment with the context of that as well. Okay, we'll hear from Dan Campbell here briefly when he gets to the podium. The Lions, it's, and, and it's not, look, they won, so let's give, them, let's give them their flowers here. It's just that it started so well, touchdowns on three consecutive drives to begin yeah. the game, and then they slow down as well. What you see out of Goff and that offense early that they will obviously try to lean into moving yeah, forward? I, they definitely ran the football well early. The other mm -hmm. thing they were doing early is they were breaking tackles. I mean, that was Amon, Amon Ross A. Brown was breaking tackles. Uh, Gibbs, David Montgomery, they're all breaking tackles. That was a big part of their success and why they were able to just kind of go down the field early in that football game and mm -hmm. score. I thought the Rams, for the most part, did a better job kind of getting to golf as the game went on. You know, we saw all the attention on Aaron Donald. So they did a pretty good job on Donald, but that eventually started to free other guys up in terms of getting pass rush and getting pressure on golf. I think that helped slow them down a bit. But again, you know, that's that complimentary football. It's like, all right, offense is struggling. As long as the defense isn't giving up touchdowns because of that hot start, you have a chance to win. We haven't had a lot of super close games yet, yeah. but, but given how long Detroit has waited and given the guy on the other side of the field and given that it was a one-point lead, I can't imagine the collective exhale in that Lions locker room that we can see behind us right now. We've said all year long, Campbell's the kind of guy that's going to yeah. put it on his guys to make a play, and that's why they love him. Well, like they, they throw it to 14, get a first down, and take knees. Uh, we will hear more from you in a minute. As we continue, we're going to hear from the Lions as well. Let's show you the divisional schedule as we know it. Oh, that's our game? Just announced the Texans at Baltimore or Kansas City depends on the outcome tomorrow uh, will be on ESPN ABC that's Saturday 430 the Packers and the Niners will have the nightcap on Saturday that's on Fox then Detroit will host on NBC either Tampa Bay or Philadelphia and then CBS it's complete potluck we will find out if it's Kansas City or Pittsburgh at either Baltimore or Buffalo. All right, the Rams season has come to an end. We hear now from Sean McVay after the Rams fought, fight valiantly, but come up a point all shot. Right guys, um, you know, first of all, congratulations to Coach Campbell and those guys. Um, what a great atmosphere, great environment. Came down to the wire, thought we had our chances, um, but I'm so proud of this football team. And, um, you know, the, the finality of it is still kind of, it, it doesn't totally resonate, um, but man, did I learn a lot and really appreciate this group. You know, they, uh, they helped me find my way again and, and how much I love this and love the people that I'm around. And, and it certainly is always about people. It's these players, these coaches, um, you don't take away the credit that the Lions deserve. Thought there was some opportunities for us to be able to, you know, come away with that game. I really liked the way our defense played in the second half, and I think the difference in the game was the red area. You know, we were 0 for 3. They were 3 for 3. Um, there was certainly some, some chances that I think we're capable of executing, and, you know, we'll go back and we'll look at it and always try to be able to learn. But more than anything, just the appreciation and the gratitude is what, uh, you know, what sticks out to me about this team. And, um, you know, hats off to the Lions for finding a way to be able to get it done. I got nothing but respect for that group. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know that there's. I think it's you got to feel the real emotions and you go through it and you just tell guys you love them and appreciate them and then you just you know you just keep moving forward. But uh, it, it's hard. Because the confidence that was earned from this group, you know, they came in here with the expectation to advance um, and play the winner of the game tomorrow night. And so that's, uh, you know, I think that's a, that, that's a tough pill to swallow. But I think the further that you get away from the raw emotions of it, the more appreciation they'll have for what they did. Um, 
And I think there's a lot of things that we can build on, but you got to do it. You know, it's, you know, as we know, and this group is an example of it, the preseason stuff doesn't mean shit. You know, you got to be able to go earn it. Um, and every single year is a new year, but I do think we've got a lot of really key and critical guys that we're excited about building and continuing to develop and work with. And then there's a lot of guys that, you know, might not be here that, uh, man, I, I loved working with them and uh, certainly learned a lot from this group. And so, uh, you know, just the appreciation is the main thing that I hope they feel. Yeah, you know, the way that our defense was playing, you know, obviously not having Kyron is, is a challenge. I thought Ronnie did a good job and, and was able to step up. You know, that's a really good run defense. And we had some favorable looks that, that we were able to get into some stuff to be able to, to beat their coverages. And, and we did consistently throughout the day. And then they did a good job of tightening up in the red area. And you guys know, I'll be the first to say, you know, there's certainly some things that um, I think that, I'm always going to look at myself first, but, um, you know, there were some execution things. And on the third down and 14, I'll go back and look at it. Got the coverage that we wanted, and, um, you know, they ended up making the breakup. But with four minutes left and, you know, in that situation, we had talked about it. But I think, uh, you know, still having a timeout in four minutes, the way our defense was playing, we were hopeful to get a stop. And hindsight's 2020, and certainly regret that decision now. Reaction to what you just heard, I think – with, with McVeigh being honest about the team helping him reconnect with how much he loves it. This is a guy everyone thought was walking away for a zillion dollar payday to do this for some network because he's going to be great at it if he decides he wants to go that route. But nobody thought this team, nobody thought this team was going to be part of the postseason when the season started. And there they are coming up just a point shy on the road. Stafford battling his butt off, get bloodied, knocked down. It appeared perhaps for a moment even knocked out in this game. So all the credit in the world to Coach McVay and his Rams team. They come a point away from a victory on the road in Detroit. They battled their butts off and a tip of the cap from where we're sitting. That was a hell of a run from a Rams team of whom zero was expected when the season began. Jared Goff kind enough to sit through me doing a highlight of another game. I could see you up there throwing the headset on, so I appreciate you indulging me as we were doing the game from a little earlier. Let's talk about the game you guys won. Jared, you guys start as hot as you could. Three drives, three touchdowns. Starting off that way, given all the, I'm sure, nervousness and tension in your city, can we win one, can we win one? What was the keys to starting off the way you all did? Yeah, just doing what we've done all year, man, really. It's, it, it came down to that. This game got built up so much externally, and internally we just made it about us, just operate, execute, and uh, be us. And, and you were, and, but the, the issue for you is that the guy on the other side, who I know you know well, I mean, he's dealing, and that offense was doing a great job throughout. But earlier we had uh, Coach McVay talk about the great job your guys' defense did in the red area. How, you're, you can't do much but watch, but, but what would you say about what your defense did against that Ram offense to, to hold them to three on three different occasions in the red zone? Yeah, it's a really good offense, man, and, and, and our guys showed up today. Um, you know, I think exactly like what you said right there in the red zone is where they really, really made it count and um, got us the ball back in certain situations and were able to stop them on that last drive. That was huge, getting the negative play there to force the punt. Jared, everybody makes such a big deal about your coach believing in you and putting the ball in your hands specifically. They've got one timeout left. It's a second down. And if you throw it and get a first down, it's game over. When that call comes in, what's your reaction? Let's go, baby. Yeah, <laughs> we had uh, St. Brown on just a basically go win route. And, uh, you know, he's, he's as good as he gets in this league. And, um, you know, he got himself open, put it right on him. When you get that, and now you know what it is. It's knees and it's a win and everybody in your city can exhale. Yeah. I mean, what's the emotion that, that goes through a team and a city when you can finally put all that talk to bed? Yeah, it was a pretty special environment out there tonight and uh, one I'll never forget. I'll never forget it. Um, this place is special to me. These people are special to me. Um, and, and getting that win for them tonight uh, uh, was something else. It was, it was a lot of fun. 
we were up there for a Monday night or it was around Halloween and it was, you know, that was when the build was happening, right? Everybody was talking about what might be, what everyone hoped could be. Well, now you're in the middle of it, right? Like you, you put the playoff conversation, ah, oh, they can't win one to bed. What, you got another home game next week. What kind of belief exists in that locker room about what you guys can do, Jared? Yeah, we believe it. You know, we can do anything. We got, you know, three more games and be champions. But yeah, this this next one will be at home again, and uh, it'll be fun, man. It'll be another loud environment. You know, whoever wants to come in here, and uh, it'll be a good one. All right, a last quick thought, and I know you've talked about it all week long. We all know that's where you played. We all know you know a lot of guys there. Is there what else is there in this for you tonight to win this game against that team? Yeah, it, it's so outweighed by everything that it means to our city and our team and um, everything that our team has built up to this point. We, you know, we, I got here three years ago, and we were bad. We were really bad. And, and being able to build since then to this point right now to win a playoff game in front of these fans after what they've endured, uh, it doesn't get much sweeter. Well, we have Monday Night Football tomorrow, Jared. Countdown starts at 6. If you want to see who you're playing, you, you, could, you should watch that game. You tell all your teammates to watch us. We'll, we'll show yeah. you who you're going to play, all right? We'll be tuning in. We'll be tuning in for sure. Right on. I'll wave at you. I'll, I'll tell everybody hi. I, I'm kidding. Thanks for taking a minute, <laughs> right. man. Be well. Congratulations, Jared. No problem. All right. Thanks, yep. The Lions get the victory. And Coach McVay talked about it. Tim talked about it when he was on with us. The key in this one, the Lions got to the red area three times. They got to the end zone three times. Rams visited three times and came away with three field goals. Simple math, Steve. We're not good at math, but we can figure this out, right? I could do that math. Yeah, three times three equals 18. Three times three is nine. So that's part of how it works out. Dan Campbell on the winning side of things. All right, it was a heck of a win. Guys hung in there. We won as a team, did what we needed to do, took all three phases, got our special teams involved in the second half. I thought Jack Fox was unbelievable. Um, you know, defensively, we kept them out of the red zone, which was huge. Uh, it's an explosive offense. Uh, we knew Stafford was going to be hard to contain. Um, thought Puka, he's a heck of a receiver. And that defense, man, they were uh, flying around. Aaron Donald, he's, a, he's an issue. No matter uh, how many resources you, uh, you know, that you try to put his way. So, but ultimately, man, we did what we had to do to win that game and played it the right way. And in the critical moment, Seal the game. We put it in golf's hands. He gets it to Saint, and we're able to kneel on it. So, it's an outstanding job. Yeah, just thought he played uh, top-notch football. You know, he, he probably had two errors, and everything else was. I thought he was on point. He looked loose. He looked relaxed. I thought he threw the ball with conviction. Uh, was strong in the pocket. Got us in the in the right play, and he felt that way all week. He just was locked in all week, you know, and he's really been that way for six weeks now, like where you really felt like whew, he's uh, he's really honed in here. So just really proud of him, you know, and what he means to us and his play today. And, and I bring it back again. He's one of the reasons that we won this division, and he's another reason why we just won our first playoff game here in 30 years. So um, what a stud. Downplayed all week, Steve. You think he liked that? I'm, I'm sure he did. I mean, just to, Would you to, like that? <laughs> nice gesture. Um, to, to play with, I guess, the, the level headedness that he normally does in yeah. an emotionally charged environment, how impressive is that? Yeah, I mean, I expect that out of him. I mean, look, he's he's played plenty of football, and he's been in all different types of environments. and. I think, if anything, it probably felt a little special when you hear it every once in a while. I wouldn't think uh, that would make him tight or, you know, if anything, probably gave him a little boost. Um, but um, he just, listen, man, he's, he's steady, he's reliable, he makes plays when you need them, and, uh, and the guys love him. They respect him, and uh, he's a leader. And you heard what he said when Campbell called the throw to Saint. Let's go, baby. Hit him for the first down, then you kneel on it.